Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R430 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on memory. Let's get going. Well hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R430 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in. Uh, this video is going to be specifically focused on memory. Uh, there are 12 DIMM slots in the R430 server based on DDR4 memory. And the 12 DIMM slots are a little wonky as a whole because there's eight DIMM slots on CPU one and four DIMM slots on CPU two. And we'll show you that in a minute when we actually install the RAM. And it's, uh, it's like I said, it's a little funky because they both have actually four memory channels, but there's two DIMMs per channel for CPU one, where there's one DIMM per channel for uh, CPU2, so it's kind of a strange configuration, so when you go to do your upgrades, uh, watching a video like this should be pretty helpful to let you know what uh, slots to actually put your DIMMs in, okay? Now, what speeds do the R430 uh, memory modules run on? Well, you can get 2133, 2400, or 2666. I do want to note that 2666 will clock down to 2400, which is the true fastest speed, and if you try to install 2933 or 3200, it just will not work. So just know that going in, even if you have a V4 CPU, you have an updated BIOS, uh, the 3200 speeds aren't going to work, okay? So just uh, make sure you get 2666 or uh, lower when you're getting your upgrades for your R430 machines. And when you go to our website, uh, you'll notice that we specifically have uh, the 2666 and lower, which is uh, considered end of life uh, memory at this point. Um, so we will have that readily available and in stock for you in all sorts of different sizes, which brings us to what sizes does it accept. So it gets you uh, 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, 32 gig, or all the way up to 64 gig. And I do understand that the uh, the Dell spec sheet does not show that 64 gigs are actually uh, compatible or, or they're actually supported. They are. This is where you do need to make sure you have a V4 CPU and you do need to make sure that you have an updated BIOS. But yes, you can put in 64 gigs and you can do it with both types of me uh, memory. And, and that brings us to what type of memory does the R430 accept? Well, you have ECC register, which is known as an RDIM, and you have load reduce, which is known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, the max that you can get is 768 gigabytes using 12 64 gigs at 2400 speed. And again, you can technically put in the 2666, but it will clock down, so 2400 is going to be your true max. And the same exact uh, maxes and scalability for LR DIMMs is going to be 768 using 12 64 gigs at 2400 speed. So these are your maxes and the different types of RAM that are compatible with your R430 memory. So all right, now that we know a little bit more about the speeds, the sizes, what is actually compatible. We're going to uh, show you exactly how to install it and do an upgrade ourselves. We're going to point out the channel so that if you're not fully maxing it out, you know what slots to actually put your DIMMs in. So let's hop in. I'm going to grab my ESD gear. All right, have my ESD gear on. We are safe to work inside of our 430. So really all you're going to need for this is uh, you know, your, your hands, your ESD gear, and if you don't have ESD gear, that's not the end of the world, but we do, do highly recommend it. And you're just gonna need RAM. There's no extra tools that we're gonna need. We don't need any screwdrivers, unless this is set to unlock, and then you technically need a Phillips head, and you can just pop this open and you're in. So uh, when you come in here, you will notice uh, that there's an air baffle that you will have to remove. The air baffle does have everything labeled, which is very helpful. So this notes CPU one, CPU two, a1 dim slot on the outside, A2, the um, next white slot over, which we'll show you in a second, then A3 and A4, and then it, it skips back. So we're going to show you all that, but it's all labeled right here, and it's also labeled back here, which is probably hard to see on camera, for the, um, the second CPU. So let's go ahead and show you which slots you would actually install. So um, as we mentioned, and I'm going to close them all up actually to start just to point them out a little bit easier to you guys. So, and then I actually have to go back and open them all up because I'd like them all open before I put my modules in. But, um, so this one right here, this first white one on the outside, that is A1. So uh, this would be the first slot you would install a module in, then A2, which is the white slot right here. Then you're gonna swing back to the outside, A3, and then A4. And people ask us, well, why didn't we just do, you know, one, two, three, four over like that, even though they're not labeled that way, but why wouldn't we do it like that? And the reason is, is that you, each one of these white tabs is the start of the memory channel and black is the second DIMM slot in the channel. So let's just say you were only installing four modules with one CPU. You would want to put them in the four white DIMM slots so that you have a nice even distribution 
of performance for all your modules across all the channels. You don't want to overload two channels doing all the work and then have no channels over here doing anything, right? So you want all your channels working equally for you. And that's the whole point of this is to just have a nice even distribution, right? So now let's say you have two CPUs. You would actually come over here before you start filling up the black dim slots, okay? So you would come over here and this is B1, then B2, then B3 and B4. So if I had eight modules, I would do all the white dim slots, okay? So now if we're gonna upgrade to say 12 modules, you would then come back over here to A5, A6, A7 on the outside, A8. And that is how you would technically load this. So the last modules that you would do would be the, uh, the four black dim slots. And again, it's all about even distribution, even performance across all your memory channels. So we'll go ahead and we'll show you uh, how to install them. Per personally, I like to pop open all my tabs. So I'm gonna push them all open. Uh, reason being, when I install my modules, I just don't want anything fighting me. I don't, I'm just trying to make it as easy as possible because my goal here is to upgrade the machine to make it better. I don't wanna cause any issues while I'm inside, right? So we want to just be careful and try to do things as uh, easy and smooth as possible. So the next thing I like to point out is right here on the gold leads, you will notice that there is a notch in the middle. That notch is a key. That key is not perfectly centered in the module. So what that means is you have to pay attention to uh, where you install your module. If you were to install it like this, it's not quite accurate. So it actually needs to be facing this way so that that notch can go in and there's a little plastic piece inside the dim slot, which might be a little bit tough to see on camera, but this little plastic piece right here, which does flip flop from side to side, um, it again can damage the module or if you were just trying to shove it in it could break that off and then damage the dim slot and the next thing you know you're having to get a whole new motherboard so it's just a, a really uh, simple thing that we just tell people to be really careful for because you could damage your memory so now that we've put it in you'll see uh, we've got it faced the right way the module is uh, the module is in, but the module is uh, not fully inserted, right? And you, you say, why, uh, why is it not fully inserted? Well, this is a common user error. You need to hear these two clicks. Now, those two clicks let you know that the white tabs have hooked to the side of the module and pulled it down so that the module is fully inserted and the leads are have a firm, good connection with the actual socket. So what happens a lot is the, the tab will be just slightly out like this, not a whole bunch, but just like that. And that little bit right there will be the difference of a module being fully seated and not fully seated. So we tell people all the time, just rotate your modules around. And what ends up happening is they actually fully seated in a different slot and it, uh, ends up working just perfectly. So that is one of the most common user errors that we always like to point out. So now we're going over to A2 and then we're swinging around and it does flip as far as the key to A3 and then A4. Okay, so that is our module. So now I'm gonna make sure click, 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 click. So these are the first four modules. And again, if you have two CPUs, you're now going to come over here to the whites. If you have one CPU, you're going to continue to fill up the blacks. Okay. So now we're going to come over here, make sure you have your notch face the proper way, which is actually this way. Just get it lined up. And I like to actually just put them in and then come back and then push them all down at one time. So we'll just do again, click, 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 click. All right, so we installed the last two slots over here, so B3 and B4, and then we came through and filled up A5, A6, A7, and A8, all the four black dim slots. So uh, now we have, uh, in this case, we didn't actually max it out. We put 384 gigabytes for the build that we're doing right here, which is uh, 1232 gigs. Uh, but as we mentioned, you can get up to 768 gigabytes using um, 64 gig ECC registered or LR DIMMs. So if you're looking for any upgrades yourself, please email us at sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com. And if you're looking for a custom built server, Dell, HPE, Supermicro, IBM, Cisco, we would love the opportunity to earn your home labs business or your data center's business. Uh, we do new and used, and we do all areas of the life cycle. So again, we would love the opportunity to win your business. Please email us at sales at cloudninja.com. Hey, thanks for stopping by, guys. Take care.